this tutorial today is going to show you how to make your own sketchbook. Now for this, what I've already done is I made one, but I didn't finish it. What I'd like to do is glue all this down so it has a nice um, cover. Right now I've actually left that off so you can see my binding here with the string. So what we're going to do to make this is pretty simple. We are going to take uh, some paper. Here's our paper. Uh, we are going to need a needle and thread. And for this, I'm actually going to use a needle tool, which I will use in place of the needle. Oh, can't see that. In place of the needle to poke the holes. And I'm going to use a bone folder. Now, you can actually, this is going to help me crease the paper. But if you don't have access to something like this, which I assume you wouldn't, you could just use anything from a pen to a butter knife. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take each piece of the paper and I am not going to fold them as one group. I'm going to fold each piece separate. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to line up my corners here like so. And then while I'm putting pressure on those, I'm going to take something like the bone folding tool and go along to crease it. Now, the bone folder creates a really uh, sharp edge to where I could almost tear it in half. And again, if you don't have access to this, you could use something like just a regular pen. And I'm gonna do that for as many sheets as I want. And as you could probably guess, since we're folding it in half, it's gonna double the sheets. So again, if I took something like a pen, I can use the pen as a bone folder. It works the exact same. But my real goal is I'm trying to keep these nice and tight. Now I am going to put each one of these inside of each other, and I'm going to do that five times. Now, the next stage for this, I am actually going to use a ruler. If you don't have access to a ruler and you want to make a sketchbook on your own, you don't need to measure anything. Uh, you can all you can do it by you know sight, or you can even use other objects to measure. But the reason I like to use a ruler is because that way our holes are uniform in where they go. This is going to be our fifth sheet here, and again, you can see I'm using the pen instead of the bone folder. It works just as well, and I'm placing every single one of the sheets inside the other. Now. In order to do this correctly, we want every sheet to be inside of here. And what we're going to do is we are going to find the center of our book. Okay, so this is where the actual paper is folded. Now, for this, what I'm going to do is take my ruler. And again, if you don't have a ruler, you can just use anything to make your measurements. You could just use your fingers and do every three. And when you put these on here, we're just going to put a small dot. You can use pen, pencil, it doesn't matter. So we're going to do one at the inch. So an inch from the, oops, can't see that. We're going to do an inch from the top. We're going to do an inch from the bottom. And then I like to do two inches in. One, two. One, two. And we don't actually have one dead center, you'll notice, but really the parts that we need to worry about when we're putting this book together are going to be the edges at the tops and bottoms, not really the center so much. Now that I have those holes, um, I'm going to poke something through this. Now you could uh, do this on any item that's soft as long as it's not your leg or your arm, um, but for this I'm actually going to just use this sponge. So the sponge allows me to push the needle through and not make a uh, hole in my table. So again, I'm going to just line this up. And if you only have access to a sewing needle, you could use that. But I'm just going to do one, two, three, and four. Now we want to keep those as lined up as we can. We can sew through them each independently, but it it's much more difficult. Now the other thing I like to do is whenever I sew, I double my thread. I find that it's more helpful. Um, and not only that, but then I don't have a single string. Um, so I, it's like double the work. So at the end of our string, my favorite not to use on almost everything, as I've taught many of you, is you hold one in the right hand, one in the left. And we're going to make a square knot. Now to do this, all you do is it's like tying your shoelaces where you just do one over the top. So you're right over left. Okay, just like we're tying our shoes. If I can not lose the string here, that'd be great. 
Now, the next thing we're going to do is left over right. So again, I'm still holding left over right. And you can see I just went through the string. So we're going to go left over right. And we pull that tight. And that's what you call a square knot. Now, I'm going to make sure my knot is at the very end of my string, which it is. And I'm going to go ahead and start. Now, if I put the knot on the inside, it might fold a little funky. So I like to start from the outside. So I'm going to come up through. And I want to be very careful here because that knot will pull right through the paper. Again, it's just paper, so it could tear. So we don't want to pull really tight. We want to just leave it there taut. And then we're going to go back down through here. And now on this side, what we're going to do is this taut area. I'm just going to go through my knot or my hoop. And while I'm pulling this tight, I'm going to go through the little tunnel right here and pull tight. Now, again, we're not, we're not pulling it super, super tight because we don't want this to rip. This is more just to hold. Next, I'm going to go all the way down here. And we're going to go through. Again, we're going to pull it taut, but not tight. We don't want to tear anything. And then I'm going to flip it over and come through this side. Back here. And we're going to do the same exact thing we just did, where we just loop it through. And we're just tying it off. Now, we do want to keep this a little tight. We don't want it to be a, a loose knot on there. Now, once I've done that, it's pretty secure. I can cut this off right here. And if, if you really want, you could put another stitch on the inside. It's not really necessary. And the last stage would be you would take a finishing paper. In this case, this is just paper like a paper bag. And I would just take this. Again, I'm going to use my same method for folding. And again, this could be anything. Um, if you wanted to make it a little sturdier, you could use like an old cereal box. And I would put that on there and I would glue the inside edge here to the inside of my page. That way it hides the binding and gives a little more thickness. Now, that was only five pages. So if you wanted to have a thicker sketchbook, that's definitely doable. All you would do is you wouldn't bind all the pages together. You would simply bind two books just like this, and then you take a string like my left over here, and again, I'll tie another square knot here, so in case you missed it earlier, we're holding one in the right, one in the left, and we're going to do right over left, left over right. Again, all we're going to do to bind these together is we're simply going to go through our knots, And yes, mine's a bit of a mess there, but it'll be okay. And cinch them up. Now, if we did that, the reason we don't want to do um, multiple pages is simply because the book would be too thick for the binding. Now, I do think you could get away with some more than, than five, um, but just so you understand. So now that we have two, you can see I bound two different books together. We would still put our, and this might be a little small now since it's thicker, but we would still put our binding, or sorry, our book cover on the outside. We'd glue that down, and now we have twice as thick of a sketchbook. So again, this has been putting together a sketchbook from scrap any paper you want. We're going to use a little bit of a heavier weight paper um, and you can see how to bind.